Here's how I 3D kit bashed a wild thing. Growing up, Where the Wild Things Are was one of my favorite books. I'm currently making a Forest Sprite Gloom Spite Gets Warband. Bad Bobby Brown, Brown to a bomb to a bike. And it gave me a great excuse to make a wild thing. I've been looking for a good bear file for a while for this kit bash, and Mammoth Factory Games just released this awesome owl bear miniature. I opened it into Blender and started sculpting. First off, the wild thing in the cover of the book has scales on his legs. I first smoothed out the fur texture on the owl bear's legs with the smooth tool in sculpting mode. He sort of looks naked now, so we should probably fix that. I used the draw tool and made little curves which look like scales. I'm sure you could do better. I also know you can make a pattern brush that basically stamps patterns, called alphas, onto models. For example, you could apply scales or other texture with various alpha brushes you create. I'll try that on another kit bash sometime. I then cut off the owl face using a boolean difference. I also added big claws on his feet and horns on his head by importing this tide hunter head, going into edit mode, separating by loose parts, and then moving and scaling the horns and claws into place. Nobody has to know that they were originally teeth. To match the rest of my forest sprites, I made a special Wild Things mask in Blender. I have a tutorial on how to convert a drawing of a mask into a 3D object if you're interested. Long story short, I drew the mask in Illustrator, exported it as an SVG, and then converted the shapes into meshes. I printed the mask and body separately, completing the digital part of the kit bash. To attach the mask to the flattened face, I use some green stuff and press the mask on. The gaps around the edges are fine. Next, we're going to make some green stuff leaves to create his mane. I followed Last Light Creative's tutorial on making feathers and leaves. I cut out the leaves with a hobby knife and super glued them around the mask until all the leaves were in place. I also took some watered down Mod Podge and sprinkled some grass flocking to seal some gaps and create a little bit of a transition. The wild thing in the book has a really cool long tail, and as you can see, mine does not. To change that, I rolled up an ugly little tail with green stuff and let that cure. After the tail cured, I took a cotton ball, stretched it out a bit, soaked it in watered down Mod Podge, and shaped it around the green stuff tail. This process is really messy. I also got some Mod Podge on my fingers and smoothed out the tail. Hopefully you were able to see some of that past my hands. The cotton ball and glue method actually turned out way better than I was expecting. It gave a nice texture and hardened really well. If you want it to be a little more durable, you could always coat it in another layer of glue after it dries. I also sanded down the connection point at the base of his tail because I thought it looked kind of gross. And like that, it's time for paint. Shout out Gamey Builds for encouraging me to film the painting process and use the community function on the channel. Also, thank you to everyone who voted on the poll. I'll try to use that stuff more often. Also, check out Gamey Builds. He makes some amazing stuff and his filming is top tier. I started with a Zenithal highlight. I based the mini with Pro Acryl Gray Primer and then sprayed from the top with white. Also, I have no idea how much of a difference it really makes, but I also spray up from the bottom with red ink. The idea is that it makes the shadows warmer. I guess if nothing else it makes me feel like I'm being really artsy. I also kept the hands black to match the wild thing in the book. After that, I base coated the top half of the wild thing with yellow ochre and the bottom with khaki. 
I'm not really sure if I needed to use the airbrush to do this, but if you have one it's good to practice. If you don't have one, just thin your paints more than normal so the zenithal highlighting creates color variations for you. Thinned down contrast paint is also a really good replacement for this. Okay, now to the brushes. I'm going to mark off some stripes on his upper body with brown, and then fill in the space with thin layers. A couple layers later, it looks like this. I also filled in the gaps with more yellow ochre to boost the contrast and make the stripes more noticeable. I randomly painted the feathers on his arms with the brown and yellow colors. Then I strengthened the khaki color on the scales. The art style in the book has great dark line work and I wanted to try to replicate that a little. I dry brushed black onto the hands and the scales and painted the tail black. Next, I painted his claws and horns with white. I forgot to film it, but I also painted black around his fingertips and where the claws meet his feet. Then I painted his mask. I painted the leaves around his mask with various green colors I had. And painted the wood with a thinned down burnt umber. The nose was burnt umber mixed with red. The eye holes were black and then the teeth were white. With all the base coating done, I made an oil wash to coat the whole mini. To do that, take some white mineral spirits and put it in a cup. Then add some oil paint. I used one part brown and two parts black. I just measure using this metal sculpting tool. I wanted this to be kind of subtle, so I used a good amount of mineral spirits. About one squeeze of a pipette full. I used an old brush to apply it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then used a small old brush to wipe it off the raised areas. You can do a similar thing with something like Agrax Earthshade. I then went around the whole mini and highlighted everything. The leaves I highlighted with green mixed with model color buff and then spot highlighted with white. I went back over the claws and horns with white. I also very lightly dry brushed the mask with white to make the edges pop. I also painted the raised boards a light brown. Highlighted the teeth with white, and then the nose with red. I highlighted the fur to make it pop a little more too, and dry brushed the scales again with black because they lost a little bit of their impact during the washing stage. I did a little pin washing with Agrax Earthshade to help separate all the parts of the mini too. You get the idea. I kept highlighting until I was satisfied. The final step was some OSL coming off the crystals on the base I made. It's always scary doing this, but I made a pink ink and very carefully airbrushed where the crystals would be casting a light. I also dropped my 2mm nozzle into the sink while cleaning my airbrush, so I had to use my larger 4mm nozzle I used for priming to do this. I glued him to his base, varnished, and the paint job was done. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Comment down below with any feedback or suggestions. Alright, bye bye